We're just getting started today on the newest project that we have. It's a 2001 Ford Crown Victoria Police Interceptor P71. The plan is to take it, completely strip everything out of it, make it as light as possible, and it weighed in about 39.70. So we're hoping to be about a thousand pounds lighter than that. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna tear everything out. We got uh, lots of police paraphernalia, recording devices, carpet, uh, back seat I've already taken out, uh, 4.6 V8 automatic transmission. It looks like it's got just the open diff, so we'll have to work on that, but we're getting started today and take it apart. Uh, this was fun. thing I found when I cleared out the, took the carpet out, jumble of wiring there. It was also, the whole floorboard is completely full of water. Definitely have some leaks coming in these side windows. So next thing is gonna be just getting started on removing the wiring. We've gotta take out the headliner. Probably try to keep the dome light for now and the sun visors just for usability. And we're gonna try to save and use most of this. There's no sense, I don't think, in taking all this out. It'll just look worse. And it'll be nice to have the gauges and everything. So we're gonna take off doors, hood, fenders, trunk, and then uh, some of the roof. Try to keep these pillars intact for now, uh, for uh, seatbelt purposes. battery died on finishing up the time lapse from yesterday's work so I just want to show you a little bit of what we got done uh, all the doors off got a little bit of a mess going here so there's the back half underside of the trunk the roof the back deck one side fender there's the trunk lid pulled out a ton of wiring so far working today on just kind of cleaning up some of this wiring and to pull it all out and cut it off at the harness cut the roof we left the pillar intact for now just because if we decide we want to drive it around it'd be nice to have seat belts so we're going to leave that there for the time being uh went through the wiring i originally was going to take it all the way back to the harness but after looking into the dash and seeing how many other things i'd have to take apart it just became too too much so kind of narrowed everything down whittled down the stuff i didn't need bundled it up made sure that it would still start after we got all those cut out so now we're just going to kind of refine the wires fenders off hood off we got the windshield wiper assembly taken off we got the battery propped up just to make sure everything was still working. That's always your fear when you cut a bunch of wires that it'll suddenly stop working, but it did start. So we're good to move on to the next phase. Today, I got out the wheels and tires that I bought for it, which are uh, 20 inch with uh, 33 by 12 and a half tires. Picked them up off Facebook Marketplace for uh, 800 bucks. I thought it was a pretty good deal. I really like the look of it. I like that it looks a little bit low profile since it's going on a car. Um, so we got, this is what we did last time here. I just wanted to see how the wheels and tires were going to fit with everything, see what else needed to be done. Pretty rough cut at the moment. Today's plan, we're gonna come in, chop back Back this frame a little bit so we can get rid of this extra space behind the fuel tank here so we'll get rid of that looking at the clearance I've seen people running 33s on Crown Vicks before so I'm pretty sure it's possible it doesn't look terrible we'll just have to see how the clearance goes on the frame and the uh, seam there this side looks the worst or as far as the closest and it looks like I might have to come back and trim that seam back a little bit to give myself some clearance but it definitely changes the look of the car quite a bit putting those wheels and tires on there so it gets me excited motivated to keep going on this
That wasn't too bad, pretty easy. Just give it a good cut. It's not 100% straight, I don't think, but I just wanted to kind of get some of that frame out of the way so it's easier to work around. Plus, gives me a better idea of where I want to start the bumper. Back at it again today. We've got uh, wiring on the menu today, so we're working a little bit on that. Show you kind of what I'm dealing with here. Oh, goodness. So, took off the front piece here. Radiator support, core support. All the wires went across the front here. So trying to get the front of the vehicle to move as far back as possible, I wanted to get rid of all the wires that were going across this front bumper. So what we're working on now, basically I've taken all the wires out that were going up here. I went across and I'm taking them and I'm gonna run them through a loom and up here next to firewall. Basically it's just kind of tedious. Take the wires, get them in the right spot where you want it, clip it, connect it, re-protect it with the tape and the plastic cord wrap and then we'll reroute this power cable back into the cab, move the battery to the back. So we're just trucking along here, gonna try to clean all these wires up, make it look a little bit better, and make it safer. Well, it's been a few hours, so made some progress on the wiring. It was kind of a mess, but I'm pretty happy with the way it came out. Um, I just need to run the looms around it and just kind of tie everything, attach it so that it doesn't risk rubbing on the tire. This will all be in a loom and that will all be hidden underneath the wiper. Threw a little bit of paint on the firewall as well. I think we're gonna go with black, get away from the white. And then we should be making progress once we get the battery to the back. I'm looking forward to starting it, at least trying to start it. Hopefully it starts, so let you know how it goes. So today, Working on taking this seam here on the body, pushing that back. Give me a little bit more clearance for the bigger tires. And I want to, like I said, take it down to get it weighed. Um, but I don't have any brake lights right now. And uh, I need a place to put the license plate. So kind of got to thinking about what I could use out of the scrap heap here. And initially I started with these like bumper subframes these pieces that went under the bumper the problem is i'm not ready yet with the uh, actual bumper and i need to cap off the ends of this frame and i don't really want to wait till that point to take it down to drive it so as i was trimming back the sharp edges on the hood here or on the roof kind of cleaning that up i noticed these the center brace and i remembered i had one on the other car so that's what we're going to try to use i think if we could uh clean it up paint it black and then just put the lights behind it and then we'll just mount it temporarily here just to the back on the metal so I think that would work pretty good so what I'm gonna work on next is just cleaning that up taking off all this uh, foam rubber stuff clean it up and paint it and then we'll see if we can't get it to just attach on and give me a brake lights and uh, turn signals for now what I did was just uh, take right here in the middle and just add it in a little bracket there kind of see it but I just basically widened it just to the width of the license plate that put the the whole piece perfectly end to end inside the frame so then I just bent over the end throwing a couple of uh, self tappers on the inside boxed in the ends of these frames a little bit of rust reformer on the frame stuff and then some gloss black on the bumper I got some uh, 16 inch LEDs that I had for the ice cream truck so just took those, mounted those to the back with a couple of uh, little screws. And then you can just kind of see the light come through the holes of the bracket. So uh, just made it a little bit different than just tacking on the, the actual lights. For right now, I'm just going through and sorting out the wires. Probably going to take and try to get rid of this. The wires that are going inside the body, drill a hole, take it back under underneath to the frame, run these wires. For the fuel pump under there tie them up to the frame really well you can see some of the holes that were here from previous hinges and this was from the wire loom just cleaning everything up so the other side i'll show you built little patches to go in over these holes uh, and then i'm in the process now of just bending this seam back just to give myself a little bit more clearance but you can see this side's this side's finished so all the wiring's all cleaned up with the exception of this as soon as i this is just strictly lights. So as soon as I work out the relays, which are coming tomorrow, clean that up too. On the body here are those 
just little patches that I weld in just to cover up those holes, make it look a little bit more finished. Once you get the exo cage on there, you'll never even know those were there. Just kind of let you know where I'm at. We got the gambler coming up this weekend. Uh, today's Tuesday. Gambler starts on Saturday. So working on a few other things. It's been a while since I made a video because we moved. It's been kind of a mess getting everything sorted out. Taser's been a little bit neglected, but today here's where we're at. Right now we've got just the single roll bar and like the seat belt bar installed. We got five point harnesses, just some cheap seats that I found off of uh, Facebook marketplace. Gonna take the Optima battery that I had from another vehicle, put that in the replacement for the factory one, come up with some kind of a, a battery mount for that. Um, up front, I don't think much has changed since my last video. I think we're gonna paint the radiator and then this cooler, which I think is for like the power steering or something, we're gonna paint that black. Not, just not a huge fan of the big silver rectangle. I think it makes it look odd in the front. I think black will just make it blend in a little bit better. Uh, it's got the Ford 8.8 .8 taken apart, getting ready to pull out the old gear set the old carrier get rid of these spider gears we got the yukon uh, 513 gears going in and then also got a limited slip from them as well that's the plan we thought we, if we can at least get that far we'll feel pretty good about it and then if we have any extra time at all i'm gonna try to take and finish up a little bit of this cage maybe at least the bars that come to the back well back working on the taser a little update on the gambler Basically, we got the rear end tore apart and come to find out that uh, Amazon lied to me and said that uh, we had the 31 spline axles in the Crown Vic when it turns out we had the 28 spline. So got the whole rear end tore apart, put the limited slip in, and then went to slide the axles back in and there was just all kinds of play, sloppiness, it was wrong. We only had like two days to finish up for the gambler, throw in the Google, try to figure out what we can do, what can we do, and turns out the only option for this year, 2001, um, one of the forums said, you gotta switch to the limo axle. The limo axle is the way to go. It's got the right length, and it's got the right amount of splines, right diameter. So we overnighted the limo axles, found a place up in Northern Idaho that could get them to us in time, get it all ready to go, and uh, slide them in and then find out that the bearing diameter of the limousine axle is larger than the Crown Victoria axle. So anyone who's looking to upgrade to the 31 spline in the back of the Crown Victoria, uh, well, limo axles will work, but I did have to take them to a machine shop and they had to take off some material out near the bearing in order for it to fit. So. Needless to say that that wasn't going to work for Gambler. We didn't get we didn't get it done, and uh, we missed out on Gambler. Instead, we spent a little bit of time working on the cage. Decided that you know since we weren't going to make it, maybe we at least make some progress on the rest of the stuff. Figure out the axles later. Go that route. So uh, that was last year, last summer, and then during the move, haven't spent a ton of time. But we have in the last couple of weeks made some progress. So I wanted to kind of update exactly what's been done. So we got the rear end in, so it's got the uh, 513 gears, limited slip from Yukon. It's got the limousine 31 spline axles uh, that got machined down to fit inside the bearings. Um, we finished while we were there, while I was in Idaho, we finished up these uh, back braces, got those on, we're really happy with how that came out. Uh, and then in the past, couple weeks we worked on this uh, like halo bar whatever you'd call it here and then uh, last week we got these kick down or a pillar bars and got these two inch receiver frame mounts set on there to have something to support it got a new windshield installed and then immediately got all my welding spatter all over that so that was a rookie mistake lesson learned uh, we got the battery installed, but now we've kind of moved on. Uh, my next thought was I'd like to be able to take more than one person with me. So we've got the battery installed here in the back. It's it's secured okay. I mean, it won't go anywhere. Um, but now that we've got this seat, I just picked this up off Facebook Marketplace. Uh, pretty cheap. So now that we've got the seat for the back, you can see that it's going to cause issues 
the person sitting here in the back passenger side is going to have their feet right on the battery. So it is an Optima. I could put it somewhere else, but I'm just not sure exactly where I want to put that. So what I'm working on today, um, I got to get some type of a mount for this back seat. The floor is not too bad as far as fitment here. So you can see it's got the hump in the middle, um, but these PRP seats were made to go in the back of a razor and they kind of have a little spot there for the console or for the hump of a UTV. So that'll actually fit okay. Um, you can kind of see where the two support bars come in here and then uh, about right here. So I gotta come up with some type of a mount, maybe angle iron, some way for that to just hold level and hold secure. And then uh, bought another set of those Aces Racing uh, harnesses. So we'll get those hooked up, figure out exactly how high we need it here on this back bar and then do another like hardest bar, just like we did in the front. Just put a new air filter on there. It's a little bit excessive, but it'll work. Beyond that, I worked on cleaning up, cutting back some of the frame and pounding back some of the body to just make some clearance. It does still rub on the inside here. When you turn all the way, same thing on the other side of the car. Got the seat mounts worked out here on the taser. So basically what I ended up doing was these pieces came with the seat. And so I just ended up trimming them down, took off some off the end, got them welded in with some pieces of angle just to kind of hold the elevation where I wanted it. And then I've got those pieces of angle on the end as well. Welds, of course, are questionable, but I think it'll be all right. It seems to be holding in there fine. Uh, and just kind of put a couple pieces of scrap over the holes that I had cut earlier. So that's what we got for the seat mount. We got it bolted in. Right now we're only using the four outside bolts because I know I'm going to inevitably have to take that back out to do the seat belt mounts and also the harness bar. I got some mirrors installed. They just attach on to the one and three quarter tubing. Harness bar installed. Let's just look at them from here. <laughs> they look a little better at this distance. Not super great, but it's definitely in there. So it's not going anywhere. The welds could use some improvement, but that's just going to take time. For now, that's what we call gambler spec. It's good enough. I'm not gonna worry about it any more than I have. We got the seat finish installed now. It's got eight bolts that hold it down. Uh, and then you can see the bolts that we used here for the seat belt mounts. Um, two harnesses, one on either side. Uh, they connect to our harness bar, which we installed. Really happy with how that came out. Um, and then this center seat belt, but really happy with how it came out overall. This was for a, uh, like a Razor 1000, I think is what they said. Um, and it fits pretty well. I think it, it lines up pretty well. It matches with the front seats. And uh, really happy with the size. And actually riding in it, it's more comfortable than these other junk ones that I have uh, for sure. So I had an idea that maybe I could set up a rooftop tent for the Taser. And so I had uh, some scrap material that my cousin gave me. It was uh, a spool fiber for fiber optics. And it has some of these square tubes on it. And so what I'm starting with here, what we're gonna try is see if we can't make this into a platform. I got the dimensions of a tent off of Amazon. And so this, is, this would be half of the tent so you kind of can see I think the idea would be to lift it up just a little bit on on a platform or raise it off the roll bar two or three inches and then you can kind of see how it looks from the side so I'll build a second one and then this will actually the second one will set on top of it here and then it will hinge out so it'll form a platform that is six foot wide this way and then i think it ends up being like 84 or 88 inches uh, coming out this way with the ladder on the end which supports the other side we got all the pieces cut and we have two almost the same 
rectangles here. Working on the hinges and we got kind of a template. Basically just take this piece of uh, 3 16 sheet metal and my plan is to take kind of this shark fin shape and make four hinges out of it. Check out the results. Definitely not perfect, but easily gambler spec. So we got the bottom piece of the rooftop tent where it mounts onto the roll bar. I just tacked in place these little clamshell roll bar uh, mounts that I made. So basically just took a, a piece of uh, scrap metal and then held everything up in place, got it centered the way I liked it, and then just kind of tacked everything in place. So you can see how once that's all final welded, uh, you'll be able to just set this up, slide it up into place with the front of the roll bar, and then bolt it down in the front and in the back. And of course that's the underside and you can see the hinges on this side are all final welded now. So you can see how these uh, clamps, these clamshells hook onto the roll cage. So I got those welded onto the steel plates. You can see just a few spots where I was able to hit them. Pretty strong from what I can tell. All these mounts are just kind of snugged up, just finger tight for now. But already, I mean, there's, there's a lot of support and a lot of strength. So the next thing we're looking at is the decking material. A uh, few of the DIYs that I saw showed using plywood as kind of the deck material, which seemed fine. Uh, plywood used to be kind of the cheap option, um, but it's with lumber prices, not really that anymore. So that kind of put a little bit of a, a downturn on it for me, plus the fact that over time it's going to rot and deteriorate and warp. There were just a lot of downsides to using plywood. So I was trying to find an alternative. Um, steel is too heavy. Aluminum is too expensive. I really wanted to find something that I could like repurpose um, and do inexpensive, um, but also make use of something that you know other people aren't using. So went to the junkyard yesterday, went through looking around just to see what kind of ideas I could come up with. And I think we'll be able to use the roof out of an old Econoline van. So we got back from the junkyard, we got our piece of roof, uh, just over 10 feet long and just over four feet wide. So my cousin Anthony's working with me today. He helped me get this home. So what we're gonna do next, all these braces have got some kind of a foam adhesive, it looks like underneath them. So we're gonna try the heat gun and see if we can't get these off. And that should take the arch out of the, uh, or the curve out of the roof so we can go ahead and cut it. Quick roof tent update, so we've got both sides now cut to fit onto the framework. I'm going to prep the frames for paint and add those extra braces. So I got the both frames taken off, I took all the rust off, knocked it all down and then threw a coat of paint on it. We got the bottom deck mounted now to the roll bar using our roll bar uh, clamps that I bought, so that worked out pretty well. And then you can see how I added that uh, brace across it now. And then what we decided to go with on this is some uh, like really short <clears throat> sheet metal screws. I didn't really know how close to put these screws, so I started, this is close to seven inches, and then down the center is around six. And then um, going this way, I just kind of tried to put one on each bump up on either side of it. And we could do the same thing to the other half. It's been a long day, but we got some stuff done. Let's show you what we got here. I was able to get the both pieces put together. We got the panel put on each side. All painted up, screwed down. Let's kind of give you the walk around. Just got one bolt here uh, with a lock nut and then these two holes will be for the tent poles when I get to that point. Okay, we are making some serious progress now. Everything laid out, got the platform stretched out 
and then took my tent. It was the first time I've tried it on and it seemed to fit pretty well. For right now, this is kind of how we're doing it. Since we got a camp tonight, I've just got a single self-tapping screw to hold in the strap to hold it down. And then you can see the tent pole still goes into the old mount. The width on it is about perfect. Length on it, about perfect as well. Um, same thing in the front for the ladder. Uh, just use some, for right now, some more self-tapping screws with a little hinge that I bought from the steel supply place. Um, that works pretty well. And then as you can see, ladder, it will extend one more step, but right there is holding it close to level. I guess you're supposed to put, you know, some of the weight on that, on that ladder that's supposed to, to bear the brunt of the weight that you put on this extended piece. So it's just slightly inclined so that when you get in, it kind of can take that weight. And then on the inside, I rolled out my three inch uh, mattress topper that I bought from Walmart. It was like $98 uh, queen size. And you can see size wise, I mean, it is almost exactly, I thought I, thought I might have to do some trimming. Um, it's still relaxing in the, in the heat from being in the bag at the store but it's exactly wall to wall it's gonna work out perfectly so I think that's a pretty successful uh, rooftop tent build everything really turned out pretty well um, really happy with the way everything looks it looks pretty professional so far I I think that was a pretty good choice with the uh, van roof all right quick update on what's going on with the taser today we're working on installing this trailer hitch. Uh, I found it on Facebook Marketplace. It's brand new, uh, but it was for a Chevy, like 2500 or 3500 So it's way overkill for what you would need and what I'm going to do with it. But it was cheap. So the issue that I'm having is you can see the hitch is smaller than the opening. And then, of course, I don't really have much frame to work with. So first thing I did, come in here and chop apart all the pieces of the hitch that I didn't need. So this piece would go out uh, to give you some twist support in the hitch. So cut those off. And then there was the mounting brackets, which were here, um, which were basically useless because they didn't reach anything either. So I got all those cut off. Um, then I came back with some six inch angle iron uh, that I had for my brother and made just kind of a saddle. You could see how it fits just around the frame there. Um, got just a small support piece at the bottom just to give you a little bit of twist support. And then of course the six inch, uh, half inch thick angle iron will you know keep all the downforce here. It'll be just fine, lots of strength. So that'll end up having some bolts that go through the frame to attach it. Uh, same thing on this side. You can kind of see I gave some uh, more material up underneath the frame, or up underneath the bodywork here where the gas tank is at, just so I have a little bit more space to get a couple bolts. Okay, so we finished up the hitch last night, got it painted. Paint is dried. We're going to put that on this morning. I'll just show you kind of how it came out. You can see those uh, like C notches here on the sides or C mounts welded on each end. The middle is basically the same as factory. So I'll set this camera down and then just show you kind of how it goes on. So basically, just got to notch that piece underneath, and then slide the bolts through. There we go. So that's it. 
I'll grab some uh, washers and some nuts and throw on the end there. I just need to get those four bolts tightened up and then the hitch is finished. So we got um, some progress made on the fenders as well as the rock sliders. So you can kind of see on this side, I've got it pretty much done besides the cleanup. Welded here to the two inch. We've got all the seam knocked down there so we can cover that up with a piece of diamond plate. You can see the rock slider was really, really tight. So that was just pushed back with a hammer to be sure I had clearance all the way. Inch and three quarter tubing connects to the frame. And then uh, I have one inch tubing that I use to form just kind of this framework for uh, what, what will be the back fender. I got the tail light mount done for the driver's side here. Came out okay. Uh, just made myself a little bracket, welded on the bracket, bolted up the, uh, these are motorcycle tail lights off of Amazon, so bolted those up. Then we got the framework set up for the fenders on this side. Still need to cap the ends of the tubing in the front and on the side there, but you can see all the rock sliders done tied into the frame there on the side. Um, did my best to try to make it symmetrical without, there wasn't a lot of frame of reference with all the junk I had cut off. It was, it was difficult to try to make it feel like it was symmetrical. This side has, you can see there's kind of a, a bump up there where the gas tank filler neck would go, whereas on the passenger side that didn't exist. So. Just kind of held everything in place best I could, but that's all finished up. First thing, we got the driver's side B-pillar delete finished, finally. So we've got 14 gauge diamond plate, basically just ran it uh, on the top of the rock slider, covered up the old seam. I'll take you back to the other side here. So you've got the B-pillar and then you've got the seam in the bodywork, and also the plastic wire protector. So each of those things is getting deleted to kind of clean up the look a little bit. You can see on this side, it's just it's just bad. I mean, when the seam was sticking up before and we had uh, you know even rougher edges on the B-pillar, it was definitely worse. But when you come back over to the new side, you've got what ends up being like a four inch step at a diamond plate, which is perfect for when you need to stand up, reach up and grab the rooftop tent. Taser update, we got the metal on. You can see all the cardboard pieces are now replaced with 14 gauge sheet metal. Uh, came out pretty good. We got, I started, I ended up starting with this piece here, the top of the fender, and then I did this one second, got that in, feeling good, tacked in place, and then moved on to the front. Once I got the front done, I just kind of came back and filled in these backside pieces and then finished off with this just kind of double triangle piece just so that we covered everything. Uh, once we got that done, I just had one section here where this remnant piece of diamond plate that I got for cheap, um, that's that's just how long it would go. So I didn't, I didn't have enough to make it to the fender. So just built kind of a step uh, patch panel there out of 14 gauge sheet metal to cover that up. We got all the pieces cut out. We got them all tacked in place. Inside. Okay, welding and paint complete. We got the diamond plate step done. We got the little transition step done. We got the fender on both sides. Completely welded, all the way painted, all the way finished. Uh, installed the back seat back in there so we could get back to using it again. Uh, we got the trailer lights plug all wired up. Also got a wire here for my reverse lights once we get the bumper made. Uh, tail light brake lights all wired up, finished up. Wiring's cleaned up. Looks nice. If you'll remember, there was a big plastic loom here. So used a little grommet. Dove down into the floor there. Ran the wires underneath. So now it's nice and clean. The other thing that I did, for some reason, I found this online and it made me laugh. So I bought it and installed it. So it may be loud 
but we'll give it a try. Ready? <laughs> so we got the uh, reggae DJ horn set up on the trunk release. It's really dumb, but I like it. So much staring and thinking later, this is what we've come up with. Basically what I did was take uh, just a board, run it across, threw some screws in it to uh, kind of hold the radiator in place of where it needed to be. Um, then came over to the old radiator support and cut off these mounts here. So you can see the bottom of the the bottom of the radiator, maybe you can see, the bottom of the radiator has these plastic pieces that go down. They slide into these mounts. And then basically what I did was just take and weld in this bar. I had everything kind of mocked up where I wanted it to land and then just weld in this cross brace. And then the idea is on the back side, I'll be able to get this exactly where I want it and then weld it to this cross tube here. All right, lower radiator mount is done. This is what we got. Got the down tube coming down each side and then the rubber bushing into the old mounts on both sides. Frame side of the bumper mount is done. We've got everything welded up. I, I found these four inch uh, square plates at the steel supply place this morning when I went to get some more tubing and uh, they were a little bit short on the on the height wise um, but width wise they were perfect so I just added a little plate at the bottom just to kind of cover up the frame stubs installed we got the bumper bar going across I put a couple bends on either side of it I didn't really like the way it looked as just a plain straight bar so just added just a little bit of curve to each end you can see those stub pieces I was talking about here the bolts where that bolts on push bar is tacked into place it's got a little bit of a lean forward which I thought made it look pretty aggressive so after some thought last night and some redesign I think what we're gonna do instead is just expand out the bumper this piece here is just kind of running wild but expand out the bumper put the headlights in the bumper area like the big brush guard and then when we come back to do this portion of the cage um, we'll probably tie in you know to the frame there and then back to the exo cage so we've got two separate shapes so this is what I've got tucked into place right now it's just kind of an aggressive headlight mount brush guard that will protect the headlights and also just kind of finish off the look of the front end right now it looks kind of like that uh, bad boy clothing logo if you're you know back in the 90s if you remember that so i tried really hard to make everything symmetrical all right we got all the light mounts trimmed up we got all the end caps put on took it off grind everything down and here's what we got for a final result i think it came out pretty good paint's dry lights installed and the bumper is finished this is the final result. I really like the way it came out. Very aggressive. I think it still fits with uh, the vehicle. Lights came out pretty good. Not crazy about having the bolt stick up on the top, but you know, it is what it is. Those are the lights I had and uh, hanging them from the top, I think makes it look much, much meaner. Than, would, than it would if we uh, put them up from the bottom. But that's it, so bumper's finished. It's all bolted on. My brain hurts, but it's welded. You can see what it looks like. It gets the job done. Uh, the main goal was to just make it look more like the car silhouette, and uh, I think it does it. So that was kind of the main goal, and then I can say that the cage is finished. Uh, I stared so long, <laughs> so many different angles to try to get it right. So it's good enough. We're going to call it gambler spec or else I'm going to go crazy. Slow progress, but we've got the skid plate tacked into place. 
basically I just threw some tacks on the lower radiator mount and then the bumper. So I've got four bolts holding it in place right now. You can see the tabs on the back. I just had the four that were matching to hold it in place for now. Uh, just making sure all the holes would line up. So I'll come back and just throw some more weld on each of those tabs. So worked out the bend there. Got another piece made to go underneath from this skid plate back. Uh, and basically what I did was I took the, the remnant of what I had left from the skid plate material and then the angles that I had cut off that skid plate to kind of give it the, the slope in. Welded those to the outside so I got a little bit more coverage in the front. And then welded that together. We've got these holes here all have nuts welded on the back. So that's where that connects on to this skid plate and then the two holes in the back. All the tabs are welded on, welded some nuts on the back of those as well, just for ease and taking it on and off. And then underneath here, uh, just welded on this wing onto this piece of metal here, just to give me a couple of mounting holes. You can see them on there. So after trying to figure out how to mount this cooler here, um, I was trying to come off these, you know, roll cage bars, trying to figure out if I should come off the frame and uh, ultimately just decided I'm going to just weld it, weld myself just a small rectangle piece that comes up from my lower radiator mount on both sides. So just a rectangle that's welded, just comes up kind of like that and then drilled a couple of holes and threw in a couple of bolts. So simple, ended up being the best option there. Skid plate's all done, painted up, bolted up. Front's all on here, looks pretty good. And then if you look underneath, so you can see those two wings that I was talking about that I added on, just adds a little bit extra protection for the radiator. And then the two bolts in the back that hook onto those wings that I had set up earlier. So skid plate finished, all the radiator stuff. I finally, after trying to figure out how to get this, the upper radiator mount done, um, I decided that I think for now that's gonna be good enough. Um, trying to work out some type of a design to go across was just too much for me right now. I just couldn't couldn't figure out a way to make it look good and function good and this these mounts are already super solid and so I figure for now you know if it's not broke I'm not messing with it I got this uh, wheel and tire off and the shock out and that went relatively well then went to put the new one in and the distance between the mounting holes is different so this one is two and an eighth and the one that I've got is two and seven sixteenths so right here in between is too wide to hit the bolt holes. So this is what we ended up with. I think I've got it narrow enough now to be able to bolt in. Threw a little bit of spray paint on there just to cover up some of the raw metal. Uh, I also opened up the wheel spacers because I figured, you know, might as well see what else is wrong, but uh, they seem like they'll be okay. So, so what we're gonna need to do, these wheel spacers, which are one inch, are not enough to past the ends of the old studs. So I'm gonna to need to come back and mark this. I was debating on just going without the wheel spacers, but with the amount of rubbing that I have, I kind of think I need it. So what I'll do is make a mark on all these, pull them off, pull the spacers off, put the nuts back on, cut them, clean them, pull the nuts back off, and then try again. There we go. All the studs trimmed back, so now my wheel can sit flush. Got them all torqued down. We'll install that wheel. Wheel reinstalled with the one inch spacer. Give you an idea if you look at that ball joint there. You can definitely see that it's spaced out more. Well, that was a pain getting that shock off. The nut was completely rusted on on the top, so it took a while. Ended up cutting it off. Opened up the other shock, and uh, guess what? This is the right distance on the bottom. 
but it's missing the cover. And so, interesting. Uh, looked at the box themselves, and I've got a number 344-397 and 343-128. So everything's apart, cut the shock off, and now I got two different shocks. I don't know which one is right. Maybe this one was right, but it's missing a cover. I don't know. Amazon put me in touch with KYB, whose store it was that I bought the shocks from. They said, where did you get those shocks? None of those are for a Crown Victoria. Uh, so I sent them a screenshot showing that it said it fit 2001 Crown Victoria and waiting to hear back. In the meantime, we've got this wheel and tire on now. We've got the one inch spacer in there in the front. And uh, basically just left the shock out for now. So we'll see what they say if they want to return these, whatever. I'll send them back and go get something different. We'll just see what they say. Uh, I'm about to start the back. I wanted to do the front first because that was supposed to be the easy part, but uh, it turned out not to be that easy. So the back, we're doing a lift. So right now, right at the top of this fender, you can see we're at 36 and a half inches. Uh, the back shocks are extremely difficult to get to. Let me kind of show you what we got. So what I've done is basically cut a, an access hole here in the floor in order to get to the nut on the top. Otherwise, it's nearly impossible to get to it. You've got to hold the top piece while you're spinning the retaining nut, and it's, it's a huge pain. But I got those off. Uh, I'll put these panels back on probably with... Um, some screws so that I can take them off again later if I ever need to get back to the shocks. So this is what I was dealing with before. These are the rear shocks at full compression and basically they were riding at their max like extension. They were riding all the way extended because of the uh, weight that was removed from the rear of the car and so there really wasn't any up travel. So I moved on to an F-150 shock now and you can see this is at full compression and I got a tape measure. Let's see. So at full compression, it's just about two and a quarter inches longer than the factory. So I don't think bottoming out would have been an issue anyway, but just in case, uh, went and got some spring compressors, compressed the springs and put in this two and a half inch uh, lift spacer or lift bushing in the back. So now that you've got two and a half extra inches here, uh, you shouldn't have an issue bottoming out at all. Okay, so at full extended length, uh, you've got about six inches more of up travel. So I'm hoping that part of the rough ride that I had was the fact that I was just constantly topping out those shocks and that by adding just a little bit of up travel as well as having some new shocks, maybe it'll ride a little bit better. Rear end is finished up this morning. This is what it looks like. We got the two and a half inch spacers installed. Give you an idea about how much taller it is here. All right, so we were at 36 and a half before and looks like we're pushing 38 and three quarters. So just about, what, two and a quarter inches of lift on the back gave it a little bit of a rake there which is nice got some more clearance in, in the back for when we carry a load and we'll see if that helps with the ride uh, front shocks uh, we've got this side installed i found out that that is actually a shock from a ford ranger but it seems good and for the price there wasn't anything even comparable um, and then on this side, I ended up just putting back in the old shock uh, from the driver's side for now. I already installed it, but on our last test of suspension as I was driving out on the dirt road, I lost the air cleaner, didn't know about it, did donuts in the dust, and uh, who knows how much dust I sucked up. But I think what happened was this thing is massive and heavy, and so I think with just the vibrations of the engine, the vibrations of the car, over time that just pulled itself off it was just held on with that simple clamp um, so i opted for one that's much shorter i'm hoping that uh, the 
shorter length as well as uh, being a little bit lighter will put a little less pressure on it. I think I'm also going to come back and just throw, you know, some type of a tech screw or something in there. So we got the rooftop tent cover out here and I cut out the vinyl, stuck it on. I've never uh, spray painted on the vinyl before, but Google tells me it'll be fine. So we're going with that. So I peeled off all the vinyl. It looks pretty good. No real major issues. So you can see now uh, with the red and then I took the vinyl off the Gambler 500 part as well. Everything came out pretty good. We've got a few spots to touch up like in between there, just some overspray spots, and then we'll be good to throw that back on. There's the final product. Came out pretty good. It's installed and just finishing up on the drying. All right, we got to Boise. Pretty windy. Let's check the damage. Hmm. Well, I was kind of hoping it ripped on the seam, but, uh, it looks like it did not. So the stitches were strong enough, but the fabric was not. Well, we're about out of light here on the last day before Gambler. I just want to show you what we got done before it got too dark. So we got the rear bumper done. You can see here we added the reverse lights, which would be really nice. Got a spot for the license plate. And then for now, it's covering up the hitch, but we'll get the spring cover so that that's uh you can fold it up to be able to see the hitch there uh, we got toolbox installed in the back that works good we got dome lights i'll show you how they work we wired everything back to the original lighting so you can kind of see the this one kind of lights up the cargo area and this one lights up like the map light area so that works and it all comes back to the same interior switch as before I'll turn on the reverse lights too. So reverse lights work on the same reverse light wire as factory. Uh, Dustin's wife fixed us up on the tent. So that was nice. So we got that hole patched up. And then we also added the light bar and uh, we were struggling to figure out where to put the switch but we have this extra switch for the rear defroster so we were able to use that to power the light bar so we've got lots of lights interior lights backup lights we got the big light bar up front and uh, i think that's pretty much going to do it door bars finished high lift jack mount finished so welded at the front of the cage, welded at the back here, tried to kind of tie in the look with the elevation of the harness bar. Came out pretty good. I'm, I'm still thinking, I feel like you need something else like below it to just make it look more doorish. So maybe a second bar that, you know, comes down or something. I don't really have time for that at all right now. Um, here's the high lift jack. That went on pretty well. Okay, so this is what I've come up with. I took, made myself just a cardboard template of what I felt like the hinge size needed to be. I used the diameter of the tubing to kind of determine this length of the base of the hinge so that it was kind of gonna use most of that circle. So cut out two of these out of this thinner, thick steel and then one out of this big boy, half inch, whatever thickness that was, just a couple pieces of scraps that I had. So cut the basic shape out, then come back, round them off so that they match. So I welded them together, you can see the tacks. Welded them together, round them off so they match. The center piece is not as critical to match, so it's actually just a tiny bit longer, which is fine. Um, then I cut out these circles which are gonna be kind of the end caps, which would fit right on the end of those inch and three quarter tubes. So this is what the final product ended up looking like. Uh, welded the best they could, and then ground down some of the stuff that was sticking outside of the, the plug here. So we got the section of tubing cut out where the hinge needs to go. 
the uh, pink mark there is kind of the reference mark for me as to the direction the hinge needs to travel to get the tubing to clear the mirror and the light. Okay, Lambo door installed. You ready? So I committed, made the cut. Uh, I went to Tractor Supply looking for hinge ideas. I really want to do something fancy, but in the end, this is what I ended up with. So it's basically just one of these PTO locking pins um, and then a few nuts. Uh, I don't know, this is probably not a long-term solution, but I've got like a couple hours left in today and then I'm leaving in the morning. So this way the locking pin goes through, two nuts on each side, helps to kind of stabilize it. So when you can see there's just, there's a little bit of slot, but not much. So that just pulls out and then underneath it, just a little tab that just catches it. Uh, there is a little bit of play just from being such a long door. Well, that's okay. I don't think for, the, for what I'm doing right now, this is not going to be a big deal. So that at least comes down, has a place to sit. And then when you want to you know, go drive, you just slide this locking pin back through these, latch it up, and you're good. Get to your spot, unlatch, and that hinges up just like that. So I wasn't sure on how wide I wanted it to hinge. Let's see if I could come around here. But I think that's about right. It sticks out, which is good. It's not going to be open all the time. So I think it, you know, it's noticeable when it comes out nice and wide instead of coming straight up and down. Um, and I like that about it. So then when you're done, just come back, throw your pin back in. Well, that's going to be a wrap on 2022 for Taser Mods. Uh, we had a great time, got a lot of stuff done. I do have a few things in store for you for 2023. A little sneak peek here in the background. But uh, I'll leave you with video footage from the Utah Gambler 500, the Buckskin Cup race. Thanks for watching.